In this video, I'm going to talk about a few more Z890 motherboards, and this time around, I have four new models from MSI. So they are made for Intel's new Core Ultra processors that are launching later this week, and they have the new LGA 1851 socket that you will need for these CPUs. So let's check them out, uh, let's talk about all the features that these motherboards have to offer, uh, what sets them apart from each other, and how they compare to ASUS motherboards that I talked about uh, in my previous video. So let's begin. In terms of general upgrades, uh, there is not that much we need to talk about today. It is mostly the things that we've seen on the Z790 motherboards, but then with some improvements. So the main thing is the fact that the new CPUs will have 24 PCIe lanes instead of 20. So you will be able to run a Gen 5x4 SSD without lowering your GPU's bandwidth, like it was on the Z790 motherboards, and that the Thunderbolt port is expected to be standard on most boards. Uh, as before, I'm going to start with the most basic model of them all, which is the Pro Z890A Wi-Fi, and then I'm going to work my way down the stack. Now, I generally like the Pro series because they tend to look a bit more minimalistic than some of the more uh, gaming-focused designs, and this one is not an exception. It combines a nice black PCB with white silver covers and heat sinks, and that will make it very easy to combine with various GPUs and coolers on the market. Feature-wise, it offers quite a lot. Actually, you get four M.2 slots, uh, three of them are heat-synced, uh, four SATA ports, eight fan headers, three addressable RGB headers, two internal USB 2 ports, internal USB 3 port, and an internal USB Type-C port with fast charging support. There's even a hex display on this board, which I know a lot of people actually care about. One of MSI's main focus points for this launch is their easy DIY concept, which means that they're trying to make uh, PC building even easier than it is. So they included a GPU release system, uh, little latches instead of tiny screws on all of the M.2 slots. The top Gen 5 SSD heatsink is toolless, the IO shield is integrated, and they include a little extension cable that lets you easily connect all the front panel connectors from the case. So my only gripe here is that the M.2 slot that is positioned right under the graphics card should have a heatsink as well. On the back, you get at four 5 gigabit USB ports, uh, four 10 gigabit USB ports, and two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which double as USB 4 ports as well. MSI also bumped the Ethernet ports to 5 gigabit models, while on most other boards, 2.5 will still be the standard. On the VRM side, you get 16 90 amp power stages just for the CPU, with decent heat sinks on all of them. And as I said at the start, I cannot talk about performance just yet, but if we consider Consider that similar setups are handling uh, 14th gen CPUs easily, it should also be more than enough for the new high-end Core Ultra 9, and then even with an overclock. The next up is the MAG Z890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, and it is pretty much the exact same board as the Pro Z890A, only with a slightly different color pattern on it, uh, with the heat sinks and covers being black with some uh, yellowish green details. So it definitely looks a bit more gamey, in my opinion. It uses the same VRM setup as well, so it will be more than enough for Intel's new processors. And the only real difference is on the heat sinks. So the bottom heatsink on the Tomahawk is now toolless, and they added a heatsink to the middle NVMe SSD slot this time around, but this one is using screws for some unexplained reason. The rear I.O. is almost the same as on the Pro. Uh, the Tomahawk adds a clear CMOS button next to the flash CMOS button, but other than that and the heatsinks, these boards are functionally the same. So the next real stuff up is the MPG Z890 Carbon Wi-Fi, and this is MSI's uh, mid to high-end gaming motherboard. It has more heat sinks, uh, they're also bigger, it adds RGB, and it is just generally a more impressive product than the previous two. It has all the features that Tomahawk has, but it adds a fifth M.2 slot, and all M.2 slots are heat synced and completely tool free. A CPU power delivery gets upgraded to 20 110 amp power stages, so it is basically even more overkill. And it adds a second USB 3.0 header for cases that have more USB ports on the front. It still has the postcode, but it doesn't have any big physical buttons on the board itself for hobby use, but there is a customizable button on the rear I.O. that you can technically use for that 
instead. And speaking of the rear I.O., it is also pretty impressive. Uh, you get 11 10 gigabit USB ports, uh, two Thunderbolt 4 connections, and a dual LAN, uh, 2.5 gigabit and 5 gigabit ones. So unfortunately, it doesn't offer a 10 gigabit support. Now, the last motherboard I'll be talking about today is the MEG Z890 Ace, uh, which is MSI's proper hobby motherboard. It looks really high-end, it is very heavy, it has a backplate, which is nice for people that work on test benches a lot. It comes with 2410 amp power stages for the CPU, so you should be able to overclock this as far as any CPU will go. And the heat sinks use uh, both heat pipes and proper fins for better cooling. Uh, unlike the Carbon, this one does have proper buttons on the board itself. In terms of other features though, it doesn't feel like it adds that much extra. I would have expected a second USB Type-C header or a sixth M.2 slot, uh, but it is the same as on the Carbon. The rear I.O. is better than I would say. Uh, the Ace doesn't have a dual LAN, but you do get a 10 gigabit LAN instead, plus two more USB ports, so 15 ports in total, which is very impressive. Now, in order to see which one of these motherboards makes the most sense to get, uh, we need to look at the prices as well. So the Pro A launches with a recommended price of 345 euros here in the Netherlands, and the Tomahawk should barely cost more than that, which makes sense because it is the same board with one different heatsink. So between these two, uh, you will probably have to make a choice that is purely based on looks. But either way, both of these motherboards should be slightly cheaper than the Tough Gaming from ASUS. And to be honest, there is nothing you would really miss on these boards if you're going for a typical uh, mid-range-ish gaming system. So power delivery should be plenty for most people, uh, you get enough of storage options, and the rear I.O. is not bad either, with eight USB ports, two Thunderbolt ports, and a five gigabit LAN. Uh, the Tuv Gaming from ASUS, for example, only has a 2.5 gigabit LAN and eight USB ports in total, and it doesn't come with a postcode, while both MSI boards do. So there is not much on the Tuv Gaming model that MSI doesn't have while being more expensive. So if Pro and the Tomahawk remain cheaper than the Tuv Gaming, uh, there's actually no reason to go for the more expensive one. But the main problem uh, with giving us a surprisingly complete entry-level motherboards is that it becomes very, very hard to justify the more expensive models. So the Carbon, for example, will cost you 200 euros or 60% more than the Tomahawk. And unless you need the upgraded power delivery for some serious overclocking, or unless you uh, really want RGB on your motherboard, spending that much more doesn't make too much sense, in my opinion. Now, it does add uh, extra USB ports, but the ASUS Strix F has one more for less money, and that also comes with a fifth M.2 slot. Now, the Strix F doesn't have a postcode or five gigabit LAN, so MSI does have some specific advantages, but the Tomahawk and the Pro uh, do have that as well. The Ace will cost you another 200 euros extra, and it is obviously not meant to make sense for most people. This one is meant to compete with the ASUS Hero motherboard for people uh, that like to play a bit more with their hardware and just do more with their motherboard. So it is a proper hobby board that comes with a ton of features, and it is meant for people that want it and that don't mind spending a lot of money. On it. Now, I do believe that buyers in this segment already have a very strong brand preference anyway, and they will just go with their usual choice. But between um, ASUS and MSI, I do think that MSI's decision not to cheap out on the 10 gigabit LAN was the right choice for this segment. You also get a lot more USB ports than the Hero. Uh, you do lose one M.2 slot, and MSI doesn't have that second USB Type-C header, while the ASUS does. So again, there are some specific differences to consider, but in my opinion, uh, the faster LAN and the extra ports are probably a bit more valuable for most people. Anyway, at the end of the day, it will all depend on which features you really want, uh, what you really need, and how much do you want to spend on it. Uh, I only have the recommended prices today, so the actual prices might change in the future. So if a board feels 
too expensive for what it offers right now, it might still make sense later on. So please do keep that in mind. Now that is all I had for today. Uh, but before I go, let's talk about the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the end of this video. If you liked it, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Uh, I'm also working on a couple of gigabyte motherboards as well. And I'm also working on the new CPUs that should go live soon. So bye guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.